Today's a big day because I have a lot of ceramics I need to paint. So I'm gonna be taking you with me to the ceramic studio to paint a whole bunch of mugs and planters. It's gonna be a good time. I will see you in the ceramic studio in just a moment. So I got to the ceramic studio and there were actually a lot more pieces than I remember. I think that they had just been pulled out of the kiln or something. So there was way more to paint than I thought there was. So I had to get to work right away. I wanted to get as much done as possible because I needed to prep for the shop update that was gonna be coming at the end of the month. Here I'm just loading all the little bisque pieces onto a cart so I can take it out of this room more easily and get ready to paint. All right, at the ceramic studio, I'm gonna be painting lots and lots of stuff today. I'm gonna paint all of the mugs and planters today because I need to glaze them and put them into the kiln tomorrow because they've been taking up a lot of space on the shelf. And I just had this like growing pile of bisque ware that hasn't become final pieces yet. I need to make like space by finishing up my unfinished projects. Yeah, gonna be a big painting today. Big painting, big painting day, today. Yeah. <laughs> Also, really want to quickly show you what the new um, clay looks like when they're fired. So this is one of the finished pieces. I made this like little dragon and I like it because it has this raw clay feel. I don't know if you can like hear what it sounds like. I think it turned out really cute. Only thing is because it's raw clay, like all of the lines are really visible. So if I make more pieces like this, I need to be a lot better about cleaning up the edges and making sure that it's smooth. The other thing though that happened with this clay is that I think like it's much more sensitive to the temperature of the kiln. So this guy must have been really close to the edge of one of the coils or something like that because he's really burnt. I noticed that some of the other ones also are a little bit more brown on one side and I think it must be because they were too close to the edge of the kiln. So lesson learned to not load these raw clay ones near the coils. It's too bad, this one would have been really cute but I guess I'll keep it for myself probably because I don't know if anyone wants a, a pug with like a giant brown spot on its face. That's what it was supposed to look like when it was done. Oh wait, I just checked the back of him. This one, this one has a brown butt. <laughs> so before I started actually painting all my ceramics, I have been starting to actually wash them first. I wasn't doing this before and I kind of noticed sometimes like they were a little bit dirty or like there were little bits inside of it. So I'm trying to be better about making sure I always clean them before I start painting. And then I spent the rest of the day and actually the following day as well, painting all the ceramics that I had. I actually don't think I finished painting everything because it was actually quite a lot, but I did try to get through as much as possible. So you can see that I'm painting these like little, I don't know, beige planters first. And then I move on to later like the typical speckled clay that I use quite often. And in this update, you'll see like some birds and some guinea pigs and some cats. I tried to like vary it up a bit. So there are lots of different things in the shop update, but mainly focused on planters. These birds I'm really, really excited about. They are a new design I am trying out. One of them is going to be a blue tit. The next one is a little chickadee. And this is a little European robin. Really, really excited to see what these ones look like when they finish. And also, very highly requested were some guinea pig mugs. So I made a whole bunch of guinea pig mugs. Okay, well not a whole bunch, I made like six of them. I ended up making them all the same just for simplicity and making sure that, you know, the form is fine. If these are really, really popular, I will start making some other variations. So maybe like a gray one or one with spots. I've been here for like eight hours or more now. I'm really, really tired. I'm all shiny because, I don't know, for some reason I get like really oily whenever I'm at the, the ceramic studio. I think it's because it's like so dry in here or something. But I'm gonna clean up now and go home and then I'll be back here again tomorrow. So I'll see you then, bye. It is the next day, I got here bright and early. It's like I never left the studio. It's like 8 a.m., which is early for me because I usually start my day at the ceramic studio, like usually after lunch, I usually spend the mornings like doing all my admin stuff. But today I wanted to get in early so that I could do a bit of filming and also make sure that I have enough space to do all my glazing before more people get in. You saw me painting all those little pieces last night and I'm gonna be spending the day basically glazing all of them with a clear glaze and then also painting the remaining of the painting the remaining and then also paint the remainder of the pieces. Sorry, I'm still really tired and still waking up. I'm gonna show you the pieces actually a little bit better now because the lighting last night was really, really bad and I don't know how easy it was to see the colors of them and stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the pieces now and then show you kind of like all of them in much better lighting. <laughs> so these are all the friends that I will be glazing today. Well, not these ones because these aren't painted yet. It's going to be a lot of pieces. I don't know if you can tell, like they're basically stacked up 
and then there's like actually pieces inside some of them as well. It's gonna be a big glazing day. So I'm gonna pull all these out and then start getting the glaze ready. All right, I can't spend too long chatting and stuff like that because I really need to get glazing and everything. But I said I would show you all the little pieces and you know what, let me just tilt this up a little bit because yeah, then I don't have to like bend over. So I want to just quickly show you the ceramic pieces I finished yesterday because now the lighting is a lot better and it's like not dark. So I ended up making a whole bunch of new little guinea pig mugs. I don't think I've actually put any guinea pig mugs on the shop before because I made them for the Christmas market like ages ago. I wanted to make some like guinea pig mugs for the web shop because a lot of you have been asking. The color will not be like this. It's not gonna be pastel. Once it gets fired, it's going to become a much darker color and much more vibrant looking. If people really like these, I will make more of them. And then uh, I'll also make other designs. Right now I kind of just did like the very classic white and brown guinea pig based off of my guinea pig <laughs> named Mocha. I hope that the green handle looks okay. When I was first making this guinea pig mug actually, I kind of like left the handle the same color as the clay, I didn't paint it. But I think that this kind of makes it look a little bit nicer. Also just kind of, kind of reminds me of lettuce. Then I wanted to make a whole bunch of bird planters and pots and stuff like that for spring. These ones don't have any holes in them. So I do always like a variety of pots with holes and without holes because a lot of you ask for basically both. But I have these new bird designs coming. So it is a little European robin. I'm gonna try to cover my face so it gets in focus here. That's not working. <laughs> Hold on. Here. So it will become a little bright orange European robin and like you can see on the sides of it, let's see here, this is probably not a good example but there's like a lot of pencil markings um, which I put on there for when I'm painting as just reference and then when it gets fired all those pencil markings just kind of burn off and go away. Again, when this gets fired its face is going to be very very bright orange. Then I also made this chickadee and I am very excited to see how it turns out. It's kind of funny because when I was originally painting this I actually didn't really like the design, but then when I came back to it like an hour later, I was like, oh, I really like that. So I made three of them. There's a third one behind me as well. I'm trying really hard not to smudge it. I made only one blue tit because it took me a really long time to paint. And in the past, I have not been a huge fan of this yellow on this clay. So this is a speckled clay, like the one I often use. Yellow in the past has looked a little bit weird on this clay. This only will be like, probably the most exciting one coming out of the kiln just because it is the newest and most like experimental kind of. Then I did some very classic like cat mugs or after the big debate of whether they're called mugs or cups, these are actually cat cups. I don't like calling them cups because it feels, I don't know, I like calling plastic thing cups. But there's also tea cups, so I don't know. Oh, also made a calico cat. I kind of really only ever make like calico cats and striped cats because they're really easy to make with these uh, designs and stuff like that. But I also made these little seagull cups, mugs. I guess they're cups, I call them cups. Seagull cups. One is shorter than the other. And I also did like a different uh, foot on them. If you're new to ceramics, uh, the bottom of the like area here is called the foot and you can see that I trimmed them differently. Um, I'm not really sure why I did that. They are both different shapes as well though, so I think I did intend for them to be different birds, uh, but it ended up making them both seals. That's kind of all the pieces. Oh, and I did have these like new clay pieces going in. Um, I talked about them briefly yesterday, but I have to be very careful where I put these into the kiln because they can get like burnt if they're too close to the coils. I'm very excited for these ones. I've learned a lot from making these actually. They're not going to be glazed, they're just gonna be like this raw clay. And these ones all have holes in them, so I made all these new body pieces with holes. Gonna get to glazing. I realized I didn't wax the bottoms of these yesterday, so I need to wax all the bottoms of them, which should be pretty quick. It makes the glazing process a lot easier and faster, so basically what the wax does is it makes sure that glaze doesn't get onto certain areas of the clay when you're dipping it into a glaze, and it makes it a lot faster because then you don't have to clean up the bottom of the foot ring and stuff like that. So you can just like basically just dip it and then take it out and then like very easily wipe off the excess glaze and then put it away. I found this to be way, way faster than not waxing the bottoms of them because I really don't like cleaning off the glaze. And I also feel like it's kind of like wasteful because I'm like dipping it into the glaze and then wiping off all the clear glaze that I have paid for. <laughs> the wax is really, really cheap and really, really fast to apply. So I'm going to do that now. I'm gonna get these all glazed. And then if I finish early, I'm gonna try to paint one of the red cardinal pieces. That's only if I have time though. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> 
So I really like using this like little turntable to wax the bottoms of my pieces. It makes it a lot easier because then I just have to like turn them around on it. And also a tip I picked up from Joe from Old Forge Ceramics. I found out that you can actually water down the wax so that it isn't as thick and actually makes your wax, you know, last way longer. And it's also a lot easier to apply to. So this is actually what I do now. I think I use like a ratio of like four to one, so like four parts water and then like one part wax. And I always dip my pieces in glaze. I don't like painting on glaze. I feel like it takes a really, really long time. And while I do have some paint on glazes, this is definitely my preferred way to glaze them. So I use a pair of tongs usually, and then I go ahead and dip them into like a little bucket of glaze. So this is the amazing thing that the wax does. It basically just blocks all of the moisture from going in and then you can just take a sponge and just wipe everything off. And now I just need to load the kiln. We have a shared kiln, so I'm not only loading my pieces, a lot of these pieces are from other artists within the studio. I tried my best, but I couldn't get them. I couldn't get them to all fit. There's like one left. Uh, so depressing. So close to fitting them all. So I'll take out these in like a couple of days. And as you can see, some of these pieces are not mine. These are from the other ceramic artists who's in my studio. All these new little pottery pets are mine and will be unloaded in two days and then we'll see how they turn out. Hey everyone, this is the editing version of Birdie jumping in here to say that the next segment in this video has really poor audio and video quality and I really, really want to apologize. I didn't know that it was going to be like this and I'm definitely going to fix it for the next time. Also, you'll see me pull out a lot of pottery from this kiln that had like, some problems. I just want to let you know that I did fix most of them by refiring them a second time that you're not going to see here. Some of them were beyond saving though, so I have like a little pile of seconds over there that I'm going to figure out what to do with. Just wanted to pop in here to say sorry about the audio and video quality. I'm aware and I will definitely be fixing it for the next time. All right, back to the video. Good morning! I get to do an actual like kiln unloading, which I haven't ever done before because usually I don't have a very full kiln and I'm usually not here early enough to film. But I'm the first one here today. Came in super early so that I can film this and show you all of the new stuff that is going to be coming out of the kiln. It's actually at like the perfect temperature right now for me to actually open up and take everything out and take a look. So we're going to see all of the new pieces together. I'm very, very excited. Very, very tired, but very excited to see how everything turned out. I have a whole bunch of new stuff coming out of this kiln. I had to make some adjustments with my transparent glaze, so hopefully everything turned out good. Yeah, we will see, we will see. But let's hope for the best, plan for the worst. I don't know, but let's just get right to it. Also, whenever I unload the kiln now, I always wear gloves because one time I cut my fingers and then I couldn't make anything for like a week. So it's good to wear gloves. And if it can focus, there we go. All right, so let's see. I'll take the blue tint out first. This is what I was really, really excited about. I had no idea how it's gonna turn out. You can see that for the most part, it turned out really well. I can see that there were some problems with the glaze. And actually, I think it was actually a problem with the underglaze. I've run into this problem before where if the underglaze is put on too thick, it kind of flakes, which is a bit disappointing. But overall, it did turn out really cute. So I am very happy with this. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with this underglaze problem though. I might need to start actually painting them when they're in the greenware phase and not when they're bisque because I think that there's just something with the clay underglaze stuff blocking the transparent from actually soaking into it. So you can see like the, the problems with the specks are actually appearing, sorry, only on the areas that were painted. So yeah, that's okay. Then with more birds. <laughs> the robins turned out great, I think. You can see the same problem here with the underglaze being a bit too thick again. Um, I really think I'm gonna have to start like, sorry. I think I'm really gonna have to start painting these when they're in the green mark phase because this is just a problem I've run into a lot. The problem is that like if I don't paint the underglaze thick enough, you can get like see streaks on it, which isn't very nice. But then if it's on too thick, then you get these like little spots. So I might have to just bite the bullet and paint these actually when they're in the greenware phase instead, which I'm not too keen on. It's much easier to paint them when they're in bisque because they're less fragile and 
also like, I don't know, it's just easier for me usually, but maybe we'll try that in the next batch. This one turned out pretty cute. It's the chickadee. Look at that guy. Look at him, he turned out good. Some more problems with the, the glaze a little bit. Um, you can see that over here, there is glaze that went on a little bit too thick. I don't know if you can see it. Um, so you can kind of see like the bluish color of the transparent glaze on it, which honestly doesn't look too bad. There is no flaking actually, so I think this one's this one actually turned out okay. I really like the design actually. Overall, pretty happy. Sorry, I'm just I'm just like admiring what this thing looks like. You can... Then this one. All right, everyone, we have a perfect pot. <laughs> this little guy here turned out great. So he doesn't have the problem with the uh, underlays being on too thick anywhere. It actually is perfectly even all the way around. I don't see any problems with the glaze. It's very, very clear. So we have a little beautiful robin bird planter or pot. I guess they're pots. And they're kind of default thing to call in the ones with without holes pots and the ones with uh, holes as planters. Oh, and then here are some pieces of the other kind of clay that I had. It is a raw clay, meaning that it doesn't have any glaze on it, and it has a little hole in the bottom, little hole in the, hole in the butt. Here we go. Yeah. One guinea pig planter. Then the last of the new glaze guys on the top. Um, it's kind of interesting actually. I should have paid attention more to when I was unloading it. There are areas on this clay body now after being fired, even though it was in the center of the kiln, it's very, very dark in this like particular spot right here. I think actually it's not from the coils of the kiln now. I think it might be because maybe it was too close to other pieces in the kiln. Uh, so that's interesting. I, I didn't know that would happen. I don't have very much experience with working with pieces that aren't glazed. If you can tell, um, I usually just put transparent glaze on all of my pieces. So that's, that's interesting. Then, look at this guy, he turned out great. Look at him. A lot of you are asking for guinea pig mugs and I have finally made some guinea pig mugs. I didn't make that many in this batch because I was trying to like, you know, test out like the size and the handles and everything. But I'm really, really happy with how this looks. Also wasn't sure about like the green handle, but I think it turned out pretty well. Very happy with it. The glaze looks really, really good. I've had really good success with this clay actually, the one that doesn't have the speckles in it. I don't know what it is. I think something with the iron specks and the other clay does something weird sometimes. I will probably start throwing with this like more clear, not clear, less speckled clay. Another little robin. Oh, and one more chicken. So this is a dragon piece that I made with the new clay. It turned out really, really cute. I really like this design. I made another dragon actually. This is from a previous unloading. So this one has like a moustache. I think they turned out both really cute. Let me know which one you think is more cute and I'll make more of them. We have one little seagull cup. Um, actually there is another one I think on the shelf below it. But I think it turned out really cute. Okay, cool. So we have a couple of cat mugs. Are they cups or mugs? I don't know, whatever. All right, guinea pig mugs. And they turned out really well. Look at them, they're cute. So then I also have a little calico cat mug. I think this one turned out really well. These guys though, I think overall turned out really cute. So yeah, more planters. And this one is a Siamese cat. Even painted like the pose. And another guinea pig. So we have a little seagull cup, another one. And then I have this little guinea pig bowl, which actually turned out perfectly. All right, so overall I would say that most of the pieces turned out okay. I'm gonna have to take a closer look at all of them and like really, really inspect them to see like the quality of them because I, I do want them to be of high quality. All right, so I think that kind of wraps it up. Let me know which ones were your favorites and if you have any advice for like why my glazes are doing the things that they're doing or just like, you know, any tips and advice, please let me know. I know it would really, really help me and it might also help other potters out there as well who's kind of going through this like learning phase of two. Thanks for hanging out. That's kind of it. Take care. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.